Cable Issue 6 finds Mr. Sinister finally arrive at the Quiet Council meeting, telling them something bad is coming their way. He apologises for being late since he had to go fetch one of his capes as Charles says the situation is dire and the war captain should be there with them, but Eric doesn't think so just yet, wanting to hear from Sinister first. Xavier wants to have Jean Grey there, but she doesn't answer his telepathic call as Catherine meanwhile is still hung up on the idea that while people are dying in a death match of swords, Sinister stopped to get a cape. Sinister refuses to take fashion advice from someone who dresses themselves with Xavier's school's lost and found box. Emma ends up reluctantly agreeing with Sinister as Charles tells him to get back on task. Sinister talks about the maniacs in Araco and how they were right to forbid anyone to go there, but Catherine wants to get their friends if they are in trouble. Sinister knows that they aren't listening since no one over there is coming back and they are now short a few council members and that's a more immediate problem since once the Iraqi chew through the other world and Saturnine, they will set their sights on Krakoa and Earth and they should blow up the gate and prepare for an invasion. Charles knows harming the gate is out of the question, but Sinister knows that it will cost them everything then. In Dryador, the contest continues with Cable pitted against Bay the Blood Moon. The battle begins and Bay knocks Cable down with little effort, keeping the mutant on the defensive, but he manages to blast her back with the energy from his Star Sword. This gives him the upper hand, allowing him to ready to deliver the killing blow. Cable however stops, knowing that if he kills Bay, he will then have to step between Doug and the body so his friend doesn't see his new wife die. Bay however uses the seconds Cable is distracted to sweep his legs, burying his face in the mud and breaking his arm. Cable calls for his father as Doug demands Bay stop, saying Cable is now beaten. Set9 however says she declared this was a battle to the death, however she knows that some deaths are of spirit and finding Cable's spirit is broken is enough, awarding the point to Araco. Putting a sling on his arm, Cable walks off from the others, contacting his parents. Jean feels Cable's arm is broken, knowing that he is hurt and he should breathe through the pain. Cable says that he is sorry and he screwed up since now they are going to lose the contest. He knows Satnine is running the score up against them for some reason, telling his mother how much they are losing by. Cable begins to cry, saying that he wasn't ready for this and his father should have been the one to take his place, since then things would have been different. Scott tells him to forget that, wanting to know who hurt him, but Cable doesn't know, only it was Doug's large wife, confusing both Jean and Scott. As Cable asks them to talk to the cuckoos for him, Satnine comes for him, snapping her fingers and severing his connection to his family. Jean knows that with Emma and the cuckoos they could get back in touch with him, but Scott knows that he can't lose his son again, kissing his wife, who wants to go and fix this. Satnine begins the next contest, with Gorgon fighting the White Sword to the death. White Sword says that the moon will face him after he has faced the 100 champions, which makes Gorgon laugh. White Sword summons his champions one at a time, with Gorgon cutting through them with ease, so he begins summoning more and more, with Gorgon turning some to stone with his eyes before being overrun, having his eyes gouged out. The rest of the champions are sent, but Gorgon fights on, soon overcome as Satnine says that he killed 13 champions, and he will be awarded a point for each of them, which brings the team's score to 18, rivaling that of Arako's 19. War demands that the White Sword finish this before Gorgon does any more damage to them, so White Sword calls for his champions to stop. Gorgon accepts his death, learning that White Sword will resurrect him afterwards and he will be forced to serve him, but Gorgon says he follows his own path, knowing White Sword cannot impose his will over him. White Sword doesn't care, killing Gorgon as Apocalypse tells the young mutants that this is how a mutant should die, in battle. Araka and Krakoa now stand at even points, with the cards revealing the next contest, but Apocalypse already knows what it will be, going and confronting Genesis to fight one another to the death. Cable issue 6 finally saw the mutants make up for lost points as the contest narrows and the characters begin feeling the strain of it all. I did like that Cable couldn't deal with the pressure of the fight ahead of him and when he was beaten he called for his mother and father, since after all he is still a child and when it comes down to it he just couldn't deal with it. I also like the idea that he was panicking because he really could possibly have died, there is no resurrection safety net, which we've seen has made the mutants insanely arrogant in the past, they are willing to die because they know they'll just be brought back later on, they don't really care. So to have that taken away from them and them realise their own mortality again was 
was insanely cool. For once as well, the rules went in the X-Men's favour as Gorgon was able to get them up to even points with Arako. Although I'm not sure if I like that or not, since it's kind of like a last minute save for the mutants and kind of feels a little lazy. We've seen it happen before in, as I've compared this to anime, like Dragon Ball Z Cell games and stuff. We've seen it happen in stuff like that before and that's definitely where it's taken some inspiration from, but I kind of feel that might be a little bit lazy. With three issues left, I guess now it can actually go either way for both parties and I'm looking forward to Apocalypse's battle next chapter with his wife. I'm going to give this issue an 8.5 out of 10.